Hello YouTube, this is Runo. Minecraft 121 has brought us some great updates like the crafter, but it has also broken some farms, including Ian Xofor's copper farm. But the good news is we can repair it, and I will tell you in this video how. And you see this farm works great. So these are the rates of the modified farm. This gives copper blocks because I included a crafter, but it gives over 980 copper blocks per hour, that's equivalent to pretty much 9,000 copper ingots per hour. But this is also the limit of what my potato computer can do. You see the MSPT are almost up against 50, so we can't go any faster. But that's a pretty nice result. So the major thing that has changed is that the player can now take damage from an armor stand. If we just use a regeneration beacon like we did before, then the regeneration beacon will just counter the effect of the starvation. So my health will always just regenerate to the way it is. But if I take a bit more damage, for example, let's fall down on this platform, on this beacon a bit. If I take a bit more damage, the damage will stay where it is. So I will never regenerate to full health. So regeneration just about counters the effect of starvation. And now in 121, the change is that if we attack mobs with an armor stand, and any of the mobs has Thorns armor, then the player will get damage from the armor stand because of the Thorns effect. You see that I will get Thorns effect from the zombies because zombies can spawn with Thorns and I get a ton of their damage really fast. And that was the totem already. So the regeneration beacon is not enough. We will have to do more. And the way to do this is to kind of overclock the beacon. The solution was suggested by MD on Ian XO4's Discord and it works great. Now first we throw in a resistance 2 beacon, which shouldn't be too hard because we already have one beacon for regeneration. Second, we use diamond armor or better, including a chest plate. So I would take this netherite armor and all of the pieces have to have protection 4. So we need full diamond armor, full protection 4. But that's not enough yet. We still lose hearts even though at a very slow pace and the end result is inevitable. So we need something more and that's an overclocked beacon. We overclock our regeneration beacon. You see, there's a trick how you can boost the efficiency of a regeneration beacon. Paradoxically, disabling it based on a clock. And there's a great video by To Know To Name that explains exactly how this works even though the method he does it is a bit different. So do head over to this video and check it out. But the cliff notes is that if we block the beacon by a clock of the correct length, and this is a very simple clock, eight redstone ticks or 16 game ticks, then we get just a bit more regeneration. And together with the armor and the resistance beacon, this will be just enough to counter the damage that we get in the farm. Now this method doesn't work all of the time, but there's a simple procedure how you can check if it's working. So you check your timer for regeneration and you see if the timer goes down all the way to nine seconds, then the overclocking works. Because the problem with normal beacons is that it resets too often. If I remove this clock and have a normal beacon, then you see the regeneration also just goes down to 13 and then resets to 16 seconds. And that's in the weird way regeneration works. This means it regenerates only once every three seconds. But if it goes down to nine seconds, then everything is good. If it doesn't, just turn off the clock, wait a moment and turn on the clock again. And hopefully this time it works. Like so. Okay, then there was another problem. We had the issue that zombies wouldn't convert to drowned anymore because the water mechanics changed in something like 120.5. So what I did was to put a few water locked slabs on top here. This way the water will connect and will go up to the top and the zombies will be converted to drowned. Now you need some block that has a solid surface on the bottom. So you couldn't use top slabs for example, but you can use bottom slabs and also make sure, for example, here we have the strap door that no light can go in. So I just added some more slabs on top to block out the light. I also made a number of other improvements to the farm. Now, number one, I included an auto crafter. 
And the farm now loads copper blocks instead of copper ingots into the shulker boxes. And this loader is a design from Glotz, which is better than a Balkan loader than I used before because the Balkan loader can lose boxes sometimes. In some cases, boxes that are broken do not end up in the output hopper, but this design is very reliable. And number two, and this is from Tango Tech, which he recently did on Hermitcraft, we lowered the floor where the zombies walk by two blocks. And the reason for that is that reinforcement spawns very different from normal mobs. Normal mobs spawn in the middle of a block, but reinforcements spawn at the edge of the block, so they can spawn here next to the chains. But the mobs do think they cannot walk on the chains, so in this case they will drop down, and this means that the hitbox does not intersect with the next zombies. So that And that means that new zombies can spawn all of the time. Because a zombie can spawn only if the hitbox does not intersect with another mob. And previously, once we didn't lower this, then the zombies spawning here would basically be blocked by the zombies walking towards the kill chamber. So this is a very clever improvement. Now be aware that this pretty much doubles or even triples the amount of zombies in the farm, therefore also doubles or triples the lag. This brings me to the next improvement, and this idea is from Izuma, also from Hermitcraft. And in my old design, I used the lamp to light up area, so I could toggle this lamp on and off, and this will block reinforcement spawning. So you can see zombies can only spawn if the light level is zero. So all of this is now blocked. And I was able to turn this on and off using a lever. So now the zombies would spawn in all of the areas here. But of course it would cause a lot more lag. And Izuma's idea was to make this fine-tunable. And for this fine-tuning we just use an arrow in an item frame and the comparator will read the error state. So depending on how we turn this, it will read a redstone level between 1 and 8. And what I did was to add 7 lamps here. And the higher the level is, the more lamps will be lit up. And the method to do this is that I move the signal like that. So you can go three blocks using one comparator, one solid block and one redstone dust. So we can change the redstone or we can go up or down. So this needs a few comparators. Then I subtract the redstone level from a crafter, which I can toggle between zero and nine. Up to the last lamp where I have a crafter with signal strength one. So this lamp is only off if I have the arrow all the way in the neutral position. So this is the state where all of the lamps are off. And if I turn this, for example, four times, I have lit up four lamps. And the more lamps I light up, the larger the area that is lit up and the smaller the area that the zombies can spawn. So this is a really great way to fine tune the lag. And the word download contains both. So this is the old method. That's a bit more crude, but it also works. And it's a bit more resource friendly or the method where you can absolutely fine tune the amount of spawning spaces. So the last improvement is a little modification to my spawning platform. So let's kill all zombies for a moment. Now, the only place where mobs can spawn is this platform here on top. And the zombies will be attracted to the turtle egg here and fall into this drop chute. So in this version of the farm, you don't have to bring in zombies to start the farm. You can safely kill off all of the zombies at the end. But all of the other mobs will stay on top here. And for the creepers I added a cat here. In the previous version it could happen that the creeper was pushed in by a zombie and end up here in the system. While with the new version this will no longer happen. Cre creeper will just get away from the cat and get away from this drop shoot. And I also added some slabs to block spider spawns because this could happen that the spider is pushed over this drop shoot here and would block zombies from falling down. Now they would despawn, the whole thing is more than 32 blocks away from the player, so all mobs up here will eventually despawn, but it's just a little more efficiency there. It's a bit less convenient to use the farm because we need this additional beacon and just a bit more redstone and of course the armor, but it's still all good. We can still get massive amounts of copper using this farm, so this is very nice. So for those of you who have never seen the farm, the player stands here, down below, hits an armor stand. And the farm is reinforcement based, so that means we have a lot of zombies in here that will eventually convert to drowned. And they are hit by the armor stand. If they get any damage from the player, 
they will call in reinforcements, so they will call for help. And new zombies will spawn in very specific places. So check out Enix or Force video, it's his design. They will basically go to the place where the other zombie was attacked and we have some water streams in here that keeps them in place so they can't get out. And after a long time they will eventually be killed so we get the drops including the copper. But before they are killed on average they will call in more reinforcements. So if this farm is running for a while I just restarted this. But if the farm is running for a while then you get this crazy stream of zombies going to the kill chamber. And the way to use this farm is that you need a very specific sword that only has looting and mending but no sweeping edge or sharpness. And this will cause just the right damage. And you hit the armor stand in a very specific time interval, namely 2.25 seconds or 45 game ticks. So if you have an auto clicker you need to set it to 2.25 seconds. And the rest of the farm, so this is very little redstone, just a minecart yeeter here below that will collect the drops and put the drops into a water stream, an item filter and a crafter that converts the copper to copper blocks. And the difference to Ian's farm is that I don't build it in the end because I want to limit the spawning spaces and the reason for that is simply lag. If you build it in the end on the end platform will suck out every last MSPT that your server has and if it's a multiplayer server it makes the life hell for all of the other players. So by limiting the spawning spaces, you can limit the lag that the farm creates. So you can basically turn off all of the lamps in order to jumpstart the farm to get a few more spawns and in the starting phase. So I will just tick warp this for a moment. And you see over time we get more and more spawns. And we can also check the mob caps. This will slowly go up until with full potential this farm reaches about 1400, 1500 zombies and that's just the one that don't pick up items. And once the farm is in full operation you just turn on the lamps to limit the spawns and to limit the lag. Then the whole farm is sitting around 10 MSPT so this farm causes 8 MSPT or one sixth of the processing power of my computer. If I'm alone on the server then I will just turn off the lamps and let the farm go full speed and then the MSPT will quickly go up all of the way to 50 which is the limit. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos and see you next time. Bye bye!